Hello, and welcome to the fifth episode of Tech in Chicago. I'm Colin Keeley, and I interview Chicago's top founders and investors on the show. Today, we have Neil Rothschild, the founder of Rooster On. Rooster is a six-minute daily podcast that updates you on all the news you need to know. I really like this idea, and I had a great time interviewing Neil as he's just getting started on his promising startup. Every day, he follows all the news and distills it down to six minutes of stuff that you need to know for tomorrow. We talk about how he manages to do that. For example, the night before we recorded this episode, the Brussels attacks happened, and he's up all night updating the Rooster podcast to include the latest information. We also cover why he thinks a podcast is a better way to get caught up on the news than, say, a newsletter like The Skim. Uh, he launched just two months ago, so we talk a lot about what it takes to get that first product out and how to incorporate user feedback to refine the product. Without further ado, here's the podcast about a podcast. Enjoy. We have Neil here today of Rooster. Neil, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Colin. Uh, for the people that maybe don't know, what is Rooster? So Rooster is a six-minute podcast. comes out every day, Monday through Friday, and it goes through about 35 news items from all the different topics and genres of news, so international, political, tech, business, sports, pop culture news, uh, as a way to give people a quick way to get caught up on the news, all, all sorts of things happening in the news. So I'm a huge fan of this idea. How'd you come up with it initially? So a year ago, I was, I was teaching in Romania. Um, so I was personally looking for a way to get caught up with all these different types of news, like quickly. So I was trying to think of like, all right, how can I, how can I do this? So I was like, all right, am I just going to go to a diff bunch of different websites? Like nbc and huffington post and buzzfeed like well how what's what's a good way to just get it all rounded up and and there's like the skim and like the new york times digest but it's not really like i'm not just gonna like sit down for uh, a amount of time and listen i or and read i want a kind of a way to get it in a more like get it more quickly so that was the idea and i had like a, a 30 minute walk to school each way so I was listening to a lot of podcasts. So my mind was definitely in the like mindset of, wow, this is a really efficient way to get information. Like I was getting through audio books on my walks to school and back. So just really effective time, effect, effective and efficient time during the commute. Um, so, so then I had this idea to just package up all sorts of news, any type of thing that happened that people might be interested in and just make it short through audio. Um, and originally, my plan was like, oh, like this, like once I'm done teaching in Romania, I could go back and pitch this idea to like a, a news organization like BuzzFeed or Yahoo or Huffington Post, and I could get a job that way. Mm -hmm. And then my friend Daniel convinced me like, no, they could just like steal your idea and screw you. Like, <laughs> you might, might as well just go out on your own and, and try to do it. So that's where the idea came from. You touched on this a bit, but what's your background? What were you doing before this? My major was econ. I went to Michigan. Um, I was planning to do some sort of business um, job in some sort of business field. I didn't know what. I kind of figured, oh, I would convince myself that I'll like whatever it is I happen to get a job in. Um, but I hadn't I hadn't landed at anything by late senior year of um and then a friend told me about this opportunity to teach in Romania. So, I mean, I studied abroad. I love being in Europe. So I was like, oh, this will be a fun thing to do. Um, so that's how I ended up in Romania for a year. Um, and I also have a background in journalism. Both of my parents are journalists. Mm -hmm. I did uh, the school newspaper, the Michigan Daily. I covered the basketball team for a few years. So that was a lot of fun. And I've done a couple freelance assignments as well. Um, I wrote a story, a couple of stories for the New York Times. I got to do a story for USA Today about uh, Dennis Schroeder in Germany. So kind of a combination of my background, part journalism, part business, I guess. How'd you come up with the name Rooster? It's perfect, I think. <laughs> um, the original name I had, well, I guess, so the name Rooster, you know, it has like this morning wake up call feel to it, the thing to hear in the morning. But the original name was Bugle, which is the same idea, this kind of old-fashioned town crier, like blaring out the news in the morning. 
But then I found out a couple months into when I started working on it that after I like bought a domain name and got a Twitter handle and had a logo drawn up that the Bugle is like the name of a really popular John Oliver podcast. I was like, okay, this isn't going to work <laughs> if I do this. Um, so I kind of thought of Rooster, similar concept, morning wake up call type thing. Did you do the logo yourself? Or how'd that go? No, I luckily have much more talented friends than I to do that sort of uh, design and technical thing. So thanks, Hannah and Chelsea, for designing that. And so you use a conversational style, like you're talking to a friend on the yeah. podcast. How'd you decide on that? Um, so when I so I had this idea. So the if you consider like the fundamental base concept for the podcast is that you're just going to hear a lot of information, a lot of stories in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So my original concept for how that would sound is just me talking and saying all those stories. So then I would do a, a few trial episodes while I was still like working on like, okay, how's this, how's this going to sound? What are episodes going to, going to sound like? Um, but then these were so painful to listen to. It's like literally me just like reading off all these headlines one after another. Like you can't, <laughs> this can't happen. Like if, even if it's a good idea for a podcast, it has to have some sort of aesthetic pleasure or else it's <laughs> nobody's gonna listen yeah. um so i kind of thought of like what pti does um when they're doing like a mailbag um when they're reading through questions in the mail time and someone will shout out a question and then that's when they get into the story and i thought okay that, that could work for this um and then it turned into having, okay, each news item could be prompted by one of these questions. So if you haven't listened to the podcast, you kind of have each story is prompted by a question, like anything controversial happened or who screwed up or uh, what happened in court. Um, so that's, that's what I settled on, that the show would work through this conversational style. So it's great to get that feedback really early on. Who were those first people giving you the feedback and listening to the podcast? Uh, friends, my family. <laughs> I'd send it out to them. I'd be like, what do you think? I was, I was really pleased with them, like my first few times. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, luckily I have like friends that aren't, aren't just like, <laughs> yes, people like, oh, this is great. Love that you're doing this. They give like really critical feedback. That's good. Like yeah. I can't, I can't, like this is painful to listen to. I can't hear this. Um, so I, I really appreciate like the friends I have that really give good feedback, um, for what works. It's and, hard to get sometimes for sure. A yeah. lot of people are just like, oh yeah, it's a great yeah. idea. I definitely use it or buy it or. Yeah. Like, I don't know, as, as a, as a friend you want, oh, I'll be supportive. I'll say it's good, but no, that's not what, <laughs> if you really think it's a good idea, what you want to do to help, help out is to like, how, okay, how, if this was me, how would I make it so that it can do well and another thing that was that they really criticized my voice it was it was super robotic it might still be a lot a little robotic i don't know but it was really rough at the start so a, it's a really big learning curve to try to talk naturally while you know you're being recorded so talk in a normal way find a way find, find a way to make make yourself sound normal do you talk in a normal way or do you talk in like a overly exaggerated animated way to come across as normal on the podcast i think i talk in a normal way while being just more colorful a little more animated than i normally would be um and maybe just that's become more how i talk it's hard to separate okay, now I'm my podcast voice because I don't want to sound like it's my podcast voice because I want to come across as natural and authentic. So it is kind of a <laughs> kind of a tough line. Definitely, yeah. I've had some experience of that in the past when you're on video. You kind of look like you're just monotone, even though you talk in a normal way. You have to be overly exaggerated to come across as normal on video at least. Uh, could you walk us through what production of this daily podcast is like? You, you go to bed at 4 a.m. every night? Yeah. Well, that was, yeah. Last night, three thirty. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll start with that. I've put out the previous day's episode. Usually, it's like two thirty a.m., three a.m. Central Time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll wake up. Um, I can like sleep to like nine, nine thirty. And I have a Google Doc where I'm just putting in all the day's possible news. Um, 
so I'm constantly just entering things I see into this Google Doc. Um, so in the morning when I've woken up, I'll catch up on everything that happened earlier, uh, things that happened overseas after I went to sleep. Um, so then kind of once I'm caught up to present time in the day, then my kind of business end, you could say, begins. So that's late afternoon, early, or I'm sorry, late morning, early afternoon. Mm -hmm. So handling, like trying to reach out to investors, talking to potential advertisers, uh, doing applications for startup accelerators. So I kind of put like set aside about maybe three or four hours during that early afternoon where I can do those like non podcast production things. Um, then I'll work out. Um, I'll get back. I'll catch up on what's been happening in the afternoon. And from then I'll, I'll start like writing the script, um, putting it, all the items in order, what makes sense for one to go after another, which things can be grouped together, placing them into the prompts, getting the link so that um, I can put that in the podcast show notes to be grouped together. So that's around like six or seven. I'm really putting it together. Um, I'll eat dinner. I'll uh, maybe watch Survivor or whatever game's on. And then starting at 10, 30, 11, that's when I start to record out the script um, I'll edit it together, mix in the music, and then I, after it's been recorded, I'm still following things because late breaking things happen at night, so I have to be flexible to put in anything that just broke. Um, and then I do all the links and a caption for each for the podcast show notes, and then I uh, do the email, so putting all those uh, links for the um email to be sent out in the morning and then it's posted and then I can get to sleep. So that that's pretty, sorry for going on, but that's, that's oh, it's super interesting. It's a lot of work. I was, I was just curious about that. And where are you, where are you finding these news stories? What are your sources? Um, so I, I have a Twitter feed that follows nothing but news sources. So I'm not getting like anything in my feed that isn't news or people's like opinions or jokes or memes it it's only news stories at least this the one that i use for this uh, so it'll it follows I don't know, everything bbc washington post the hollywood reporter deadspin um bloomberg TechCrunch, gawker buzzfeed and like pretty much a huge yeah. array of of news stories so that i can capture pretty much anything that happens in a day how have you decided on balancing depth versus breadth so you cover maybe like 35 stories in every episode. Yeah. How did you decide on that versus maybe covering five in more depth? Well, um, well, I figure every other news source does the depth well. Like they're the ones with the reporters out. They're the ones getting like all the fact checking and the interviews. So people know where to go if they want um, to know a lot about a news story. I don't think that's an area of the market where there really needs to be something new. What I did think that there needed to be is a place where you can just learn about a lot of things going on, and then every uh, there will be a few stories that you are interested to know about, um, so you can read the full story. Um, it's important to me, to, I like in the links I post, I want to source if there's a story from a new site that got an exclusive or, or if they broke news. So I'm very much like want to be in tune to the news outlets that are breaking them um, so that people can get that full story if they want it. Um, but what they don't do well, what news organizations don't do well is package all this information together to give someone a full view picture of the news in a time efficient way. Um, so, so that's what I'm trying to do. Something that I don't, I don't think anyone is doing is to bring comprehensiveness to news and packaging it with brevity. So the obvious competitor would be the skim and they went with email because it's kind of uh, most people's habit in the morning is they roll over and look at their phone in their bed. So how'd you decide or how do you uh, view yourself versus the skim and how'd you decide on podcasts over yeah, well, those other ones? So I mentioned that I love podcasts earlier mm -hmm. and one thing about it is that like what you do in the morning, I think in, in the average morning routine, like, if it, it there has to be some urgent urgency to it like you because the alternative is always getting a little extra sleep which is always really attractive 
So you only do the things in the morning that you feel is urgent, right? You brush your teeth and shower so you don't smell like a rodent and you eat breakfast because you need to eat your breakfast. But setting aside time to read the news isn't a big priority for a lot of people. These are people that want to know what's going on with the news. It just may not be worth giving up sleep for. So a podcast can do is just accommodate whatever it is you're already doing. So making breakfast, getting dressed, brushing your teeth, on like commuting to work, it's not making you sacrifice anything in the morning. It just accommodates uh, whatever it is you're already doing. And so that was that was the idea behind the podcast and why I really think it's the best medium for getting news and, and why I'm surprised that there's not really a po another podcast out there that does a more form of condensed news beyond just putting a full length radio show out there. It definitely seems like the future and maybe it's not people's habits right now, but with these conversational interfaces popping up with Siri and uh, Amazon Echo yeah, and all those yeah, different things, right. it seems to be moving in that direction for sure. Yeah. And one more thing about the skim. So when I tell people um, about the idea for Rooster and what it does and they say, oh, it's like an audio, the skim. So that is true in the sense that like we're both startups that are not like news organizations. We're just reading the news each day and packaging it up in a condensed way. So in that way, we're similar. Uh, but with the skim, they take like five to seven stories each day. Um, and they like write a description about each and they make it fun and casual and entertaining. Yeah. Um, whereas the rooster is just a lot more comprehensive. So you'll learn about a lot more things. And that serves a purpose beyond just like, oh, look, we even have we have even more items than you, therefore we're better. But it's also because for the skims five to seven items, yeah, maybe the first couple items will be the things that are like the hugest news that everyone's gonna have. But past that, it's objective for what you consider to be big news. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna market yourself as the news source to know the place to go to know everything that's going on that's not quite right if you're not gonna include a large number of things because NBC News's top five items are gonna be different than the skims, which are gonna be different than Buzzfeeds, which are gonna be different than Yahoo's. So if you have a place where you can kind of capture all of those, then that really is the place where you can know about everything that's going on. Have you guys raised any money yet? Uh, currently looking to, currently looking to, yeah. Um, so what I'm, what I've been doing now is applying to like startup accelerator programs, um, trying to pitch them on the idea that news through audio in a condensed way is like the most efficient way to get news, a perfect way to get people caught up. Um, so a lot of those applications went out recently. So yeah, TechStars hope... Chicago is closing this week. You yeah, in? yeah, nice. I did. <laughs> so hopefully that goes well. I mean, I. I'm pretty open to it. If I can get Rooster into any of those, that'd be great. I mean, if if not that, I'll keep working on it, trying to make contacts with individual investors. And um, the plan is, I, I want to advertise Rooster. I think doing it on public transportation in major cities would be great because people in the morning they have their phone out. It's a good time to sure. listen to a podcast. Also, to advertise on other podcasts, I think would be a good way to do it. So who's working on this project right now? Is it just you or there's other people? Just just the one, just me. <laughs> it's impressive. It's a it's a lot of work to get out. Yeah, I've had I've had a lot of help from friends though. Like as I mentioned earlier, they have a lot of good ideas and they're interested in what I'm doing. A lot of my friends um are journalists and um kind of in media, so they're they're interested in it. They have ideas, they have suggestions. Um They'll like they'll tell me if I'm not doing enough or I'm not pushing hard enough or if I should start a Twitter, which I did this past week. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Uh, what's been the best piece of advice you received? There's been like a lot of good like startup philosophy stuff that I've like read from like like these startup uh, Konya Shenti, like Paul Graham and Sam Altman. So a lot of that stuff is just like registered in my brain, but like. I guess life advice, there's a quote I, from a wise friend, John Lowe, that you can make more friends in two months by being by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by having people become interested in you. So I, I just like that as general, like how to 
like I don't know whether whether it's for business or otherwise, just establishing good relationships by being a like a, not self centered. For sure, that's <laughs> I, I don't know where the original quote came from, but <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the that's the. Uh, do you have any favorite books? I I read a lot of nonfiction mostly, mm-hmm. so it's not fiction books. Um, I'm into Michael Lewis, like Boomerang and The Big Short. Like Bill Bryson, um, his memoir, The Life and Times of Thunderbolt Kid, as well as a short history of nearly everything. Um, the books about the elections game change by, uh, two, I think, John Heilman and Mark Halperin. Um, they kind of go in depth about, like, super deep dive into the election in real time. And the book comes out a couple of years after. So they did one for the 2008 election and the 2012 election. I really like those. Um, what else? The Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius by De- Dave Eggers. And one of the fiction, like very few fiction books I, I actually listened to last year during my mm-hmm. walks to school is The Goldfinch. So I, I really like that one. How do you like audiobooks compared to actually reading it on paper? I like it. I, I, I kind of like them equally because obviously when you're reading the book, it's nice to hold something. It's nice to see the text and go back if you miss something. But audiobooks give like something really cool in that the characters come to life more because if the audiobook has people doing accents for the different characters, that makes you connect to the character more, I think, as if you were just kind of creating your own voice for them in the head because it's not in your head because it's not that concrete. So I, I, <laughs> I like both. It's interesting. I've been uh, dabbling a lot in text-to-speech on the iPhone. Oh, yeah. There's a new voice that's pretty good named Alex. But it's still not nearly as good as like listening to a podcast and having someone talk to you. That's why. I so you like you compress it and he'll read out whatever text is. Yeah, whatever yeah. article you're on. Yeah, because they don't they can't get like the inflection right. Mm-hmm. They can't like they're emphasize. getting better, but yeah, they're getting not better. not quite there yet. Yeah, for sure. Um, are there any founders or companies that you look maybe look up to or are trying to emulate? I, I didn't get interested in startups until like the last year or so. Like once I've started, like decide, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do Rooster. Um, but I'd say like my my just general idols in um, in the world, the people I admire most, uh, Ira Glass of This American Life and Alex Bloomberg, who actually is a founder. He's a startup founder for Gimlet. I, I appreciate that they're like so so down to earth, so genuine no ego and like really great taste i like i i I just love that out of people but also in a different set of people like um, bill simmons and um like deadspin gawker that type of media the ones that are like trying to defy like the old tired ways of writing of doing stories of doing columns of doing news so like like being smart, but not in a conventional way. And then Bill Simmons, like his mantra for Grantland and probably his new website too is no assholes. And which is, which is cool. It's like, you don't, you can be sarcastic and funny and unconventional and still be like a good person to be around. Uh, what's the vision for the long term? What's next for Rooster? Um, so I want to grow, grow the audience as much as I can. i hope it's something that can catch on that um i I guess more so than any other podcasts which are kind of a topic based new it's a news podcast which can kind of appeal to the whole Mm -hmm. i guess news consuming public um so so i hope it can get bigger than um, a lot of the popular podcasts I'll, i'll take work to do that um and beyond that to like it's something that competitors could definitely copy like buzzfeed could come out with something like that tomorrow and do well so i I have some ideas for ways to make this kind of short form news quickly through a podcast i have some ideas to kind of stay ahead of competitors though i don't want to say that (laughs) sure how many subscribers do you have right now um i don't they do you know a way to like track subscribers i can hear listens yeah, um, I have a few hundred listens per episode right now. Um, over the past couple of weeks, actually, it's like grown a good amount. So that's where I'm at now. Um, and that's just, I don't know, I, I've just kind of blasted it out through my own personal social media accounts. So all my friends know about it. Mm-hmm. Um, they've shared it as well. 
Um, so at least just from putting it out myself and putting it on different, putting Rooster on different profiles for different websites, um, that's where I've gotten my subscriber. Can you tell where your subscribers are coming from or listens are coming from? Yeah. Um, mostly, well, not mostly. The highest number is Chicago, just because that's where I'm from. That's where the people I know are from. Um, and it's aside from that, it's very scattered all over the country. Um, obviously, like New York has a higher number. San Francisco has a higher number just because that's where people interested in that would be from. Um, I, and I also have some expats listening. So I have like a group of like um, four or five Norwegians <laughs> that listen each episode. And that's in uh, Denmark as well and Italy. But that's <laughs> that's because I posted one of my like <laughs> cost free marketing strategies was to get into all these different expat Facebook groups and <laughs> kind of just because uh, when I was an expat, I wanted something like this. So oh, here's a quick way to catch up on American news in six minutes. So I'd post, I got into like, <laughs> tried to join as many of these groups for all these different cities like Spain and Denmark and Norway and Finland and Sweden and all these groups just to post it. Some some have been receptive, some not at all. That's all right. Uh, and if, so if people want to find you, where can they find and subscribe to Rooster? Um, so on your podcast app, just uh, search for Rooster. Uh, you can go to the website, hearetherooster.com, on Twitter at hearetherooster, SoundCloud, Stitcher, it's all on there. Big thank you to Neil for coming on the show. Definitely check out the Rooster Podcast on iTunes and give tomorrow's episode a listen. Uh, while you're there, please subscribe and review Tech in Chicago. Reviews and ratings help a lot, five stars especially. If you guys have any feedback or guests you'd like to hear from on the show, I'm always happy to chat. Please reach out at Tech in Chicago on Twitter. Thank you.